Okay, let's roll. I don't know why I clap, it doesn't need sync anymore. Hello friends, Chitta Fahedling is here to talk about the super tight budget Andy Cini A6 Pro monitor. Exclusively for anamorphic shooting, the A6 Pro leaves a lot to be desired. The A6 Pro is a five and a half inch field monitor. I think this monitor would have been killer two years ago by including several features like false color, histogram, peaking, zebras, frame guides, and LUT support at a super affordable price point. The touch screen is nice, but the shortcuts never come to me intuitively, and I have to do some Harry Potter spell casting with my hands until I get to where I want to go. To make it clear, the shortcuts are sliding from the bottom for quick tool selection, then sliding up and down on each side of the screen to adjust brightness and volume, or double tap for the full menu. But sensitivity isn't that great, requiring you to tap settings usually twice until it registers. Because of this, I've gone back to using the buttons on the top of the monitor instead of touch screen. You can also pinch to zoom in, but it's pretty weird. It works, it's just weird. The monitor has four quarter inch 20 mounting points on the top, the bottom, on the right side, and on the back uh, behind the screen, as well as HDMI pass-through and a headphone jack for monitoring audio. I can't complain about the pass-through, but I never use the audio jack. Five and a half inches is a small screen, which is something I'd keep on top or side of the camera, but the 500 nits screen cannot handle a sunny or overcast day. Maybe that's why Andy Cine includes a hood with it, so you can shoot outside. The mounting kit is a standard hot shoe that allow you to put the A6 on top of your camera and easily adjust the angle for most comfortable viewing. Now, let's get to the interesting bit, power. The A6 Pro runs on Sony NP batteries, and you can also run it on a barrel connector from DTAP, which is better on a rig because you only use one battery. And if none of these are of your fancy, you can also power it through USB-C. I love things that get power through USB-C. You also get a DC out barrel connector that you can use to power various accessories like wireless receiver or a follow focus unit. And looking at the back of the monitor, you find this weird protrusion, which looks like the backside of a Sony battery connector. Lo and behold, that's exactly what that is. This connector can be used to both hold and power a wireless kit, like the Holy Land Mars 400S Pro that I have running right now. Having the monitor act as a mounting place for the receiver is great, but having it power the receiver is an absolute win. This type of thing should be standard. The sad part about it is this feature does not work when the monitor is powered through USB-C. I've been using this monitor as a secondary screen on my now two camera focus station rig, held by a Noga arm and powered by a V-Lock battery. What I get is not amazing, but it beats going back to check the camera every other minute. On the note of long shoots, the A6 Pro gets hot, like almost burn my fingers hot, which is definitely a downside. Finally, let's look at anamorphic support. Going into the menu, I see an anamorphic option and clicking it lets me toggle between 1.3 times, two times, two times mag and user. Starting at 1.3 times, on the cookbook, I covered that 1.33 is a rounding of 1.33333 times, but rounding it to 1.3 is too much for me. <laughs> it says 1.3 here, but it really means 1.33. When we go to two times, the monitor compresses the height of the frame, which gives you a tiny image in the center of a black screen. It's far from ideal for monitoring focus, right? So we step up to two times mag, and now we have a 16 by nine crop of the 3.56 to one image we had a second ago. If you're gonna build crop into a feature for anamorphic, at least make the aspect ratio 2.39 to one or 2.4. Definitely not 16 by nine. 
please. Then we have user, which gives us better control, allowing for uh, 1.33 more exactly, but it's super annoying to set up if you're switching from 1.8 times to 1.33, for example, as you have to hold on the button until you get all the way to the desired value. Scrolling down further, we have a zoom mode setting, which I managed to hack to give us a proper crop and monitoring image, but you'll need math. After some fiddling, you'll find the right values for left, right zoom in conjunction with the anamorphic setting to get your proper crop and e-squeeze. For example, when I'm using a two times lens, I'll set my anamorphic to 1.3 times because that gives me the right height for 2.39. Then I go into the zoom mode, set it to mode one, and adjust the left right dial to 67. If you think about it, 1.33 plus 0.67 gives you two, which is the horizontal stretch we want. Talk about convoluted, right? In spite of all the extra steps, I favored this option as it gives me better framing, screen real estate, and accuracy. Oh yeah, if you're using any of these configurations, the zoom mode or the anamorphic settings, you'll get a black screen when powering up the monitor. The way to fix this is by going in the menu and change the anamorphic setting, then revert it back to the one you want. But now the zoom mode has also been reset and you have to dial that in manually again. This is a massive, annoyance and gave me a mild freak out the first several times until I realized it was standard behavior for the A6 Pro. This demands a firmware update right now. I'll continue using this monitor for the time being as a secondary screen as that's convenient, but I'm more interested in something with proper anamorphic support and a brighter output. Those fields trump the super cool power options unfortunately. I hope this was useful either to figure out if this is a cheap monitor that can get you out of a bind for cameras without anamorphic support or as a secondary screen or something to skip altogether. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and thank you so much for hanging out. I'll see you next week. Shit of out.